VC. Uh, it's been absolutely ages, I think. It's been a month or so. Even, maybe even more, I'm not sure. Um, I apologise. Happy New Year, uh, 2016. Uh, but anyway, here I am. If you're still subscribed, thank you. If you haven't, I, I don't blame you. That's cool. Anyway, um, I have bought a shit ton of records since I spoke to you guys last. Um, even though I said I wasn't going to, in my last video I said I wasn't going to buy any more. But hey, that's what we do. We buy records. Um, so, uh, I, c I won't talk about them all. Uh, most of them you you've guys already know of. Um, and some of them, you know, uh, you know. I want to keep this sort of a reasonable length video anyway, but I'll just show you a quick snippet right here to the luscious sounds of Ross McHenry and his wonderful Melbourne Jazz Ensemble. So there you go, there's just a little snippet of some some cool stuff that I bought um, in the last couple of months. Um, I will talk about a couple of records though, just because I think they're worth they're worth talking about. Um, this one here was one of the finds of the year last year for me, even though it came in really late. Uh, a friend of mine uh, sort of pointed it out to me. Uh, he plays in, in a lot of jazz ensembles around town and pointed it out to me and gave me the link, the link to uh, the Bandcamp site. That's this band here, and the band, the name of the act is called um, Daughters Fever, and it's also the name of the album. This is their only album, released la late last year, um, and it is, uh, if you can imagine, sort of like the bridge between, uh, you know, Robert Wyatt and um, and Talk Talk, and uh, you know, it's really hard to explain, but I suppose. What I'm saying is like really chilled out, folky style jazz, I guess you could say. Um, the voice and guitar player is uh, a guy by the name of Paddy Mann. And um, he also goes under the name Grand Salvo. I'm sure you guys might have might have heard of Grand Salvo, who's a, um, a, folk, do a folk dude. But he's playing on here with, um, with some um, a trumpeter and a pianist and... Um, and they use a lot of sort of tape, tape stuff as well. Very atmospheric. It's a beautiful record. I, I uh, recommend you check it out. I'll leave a link down the bottom. Uh, Daughter's Fever from 2015. Really great record. Really nice. Um, some more Aussie stuff that I picked up. I went to, like I said, I went to Adelaide uh, for the holidays for a couple of weeks and did some digging over there, which I haven't done before, um, and found a couple of really cool stores, and a couple of not so cool stores, but um, I had a really fun time anyway, and I brought home a, a few things. Um, one of them was this pretty cool record, um, by John Sangster. It's um, Landscapes of Middle Earth. Very cool sleeve, you know, it looks like a sort of a Tolkien-esque, Roger Dean <laughs> sort of vibe. 
However, the music is is not like that at all. It's 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 basically it's Aussie jazz, um, jazz funk, um, apparently, you know, written, inspired by the um, the Lord of the Rings thing. But I can't really hear much of the much of the Lord of the Rings in there. It's just cool jazz, jazz funk music. But I was glad to grab that. Um, another one. Another Aussie Aussie thing I picked up was the uh, the Dead Can Dance record uh, within the realm of the dying sun. It's called. And it's really great. Um, you guys know this already, I bet. But uh, it's nice to have an original pressing of this one, 4 AD. Um, an interesting pick up here that I got. Um, it's an Aussie pressing of um, Principal Edwards Magic Theatre and their crazy release I think it's called, what is it called? The, As the Asmoto Running Band and this is uh, pretty cool, really cool I must say it's sort of like a psychedelic folk uh, record it's definitely got that um, that hippie vibe, that, that commune community sort of vibe where there's about <laughs> Seems like there's about a hundred people playing on there and all just sort of jamming along, but it has really great moments of um, of, of really cool arrangements and and jam outs and freakouts and stuff. Um, this is the like I said, this is the Aussie press on on Dandelion Records, which I was really stoked because you know it's quite a a unique label, and um, yeah, it's it's cool. I'm really glad to have that one. Yeah, some more some more stuff. Before I left, I went. I had a bit of a. Um, I, I, I put an order together from Canada, and a few things came over in the mail. Um, and among them was this interesting one, which I thought I would just take a chance on, because uh, it was sort of a really good price and it looked interesting enough. It turns out this is really great, and I think actually it's probably the best one of the bunch that I picked up that day. Uh, Jean-Pierre Ferland, Ferland and the album I think you pronounce it Juan or Jean or something man really great um, for those of you that really like the uh, Serge Gainsbourg History de Melody Nelson this is like its uh, sister record really um, in every way it's a sort of a pop psych infused with uh, chanson, chanson um, sort of poetics and um, it's I'm not sure it's quite a concept album, but it's definitely it's definitely you know there's themes that that keep running throughout the record. But yeah, check this out. It's really cool, really cool stuff. I was um I mean look, you probably you might know it already, but um yeah, it was just a really cool little find. Funky, um, baroque, um, and cool, yeah, <laughs> psychedelic, cool stuff. In amongst that I got this uh, original pressing of Dashiell Hediat's obsolete record. It's not a perfect copy, um, it plays it plays beautifully but the, there's a bit of damage down here you know as you can see but I was pretty happy with that to have a nice you know to have an original copy of this on Shandar, Shandar Records. Um, this is another fantastic French record um, with with serious, you know, psychedelic, funky sort of. Yeah, it's just a great record. I'm sure you know this already, though. Um, if you don't, you should check it out. It's really great. Um, I did a trade at one of the local stores over here um, with a couple of cool things that I picked up in Tassie a couple of years back and I picked up um, this fantastic record which you guys know and love I'm sure Nucleus Elastic Rock it's the Ian Carr project um, and I got a you know Vertigo Swirl copy which I'm pretty stoked about I don't have many of those uh, sort of nice things in my collection so it's nice to have something like that Yep, very cool. Great record. Fantastic jazz rock. 
uh, horn, horn, horn rock, I suppose you could call it, or, or jazz fusion. Beautiful. And finally, um, I've been on a bit of a folk bender lately. Uh, you know, folk music's my my sort of thing. It's what I play uh, in my band and stuff. And um, I'm, I'm getting right into it, more into the traditional stuff at the moment. Um, and I picked up a couple of cool things lately that I wanted to talk about just briefly. Um, ben Costello, I know he's a big folk folk fan. He might, he will probably know these these artists, but I just wanted to show them anyway. One of them uh, is this uh, this guy, Leon Roselson, Palaces of Gold. This is um, it's not his first record. I think it's like his third or fourth record. But this is a really beautiful album. Really great storyteller. Um, sweet guitar playing, um, a little bit political, but not really, not in, not in your face sort of stuff. It's really just mellow, uh, lovely, lovely stuff. You know, if I imagine if you had this on CD, you'd put it on in the car, and you'd just very thoughtful, thought-provoking stuff. Yeah. So this is a great record. I was very happy to pick this up in Adelaide. I grabbed this. Um, so yeah, that was a nice score. Another one along the same kind of lines is this is a live recording from uh, Vin Garbutt, uh, The Young Tin Whistle Pest. This is his second record, it's an early one from I think it's 1970. Hmm, I can't tell, I'll put it down here. Um, 75. Uh, it's a, yeah, like a live recording. This guy's hilarious. Um, if you have a look, there's a documentary made on this guy. I think it's called uh, Fell Off the Back of a Boat. And he's just a, a really wonderful character um, uh, and writes fantastic songs, um, local stories, you know, folk tales about his, his people and his community uh, where he grew up and where he lives or lived at the time. Um, but well worth checking out. Um, yeah. On trailer records yeah very nice very nice album this one and uh, to combine both my themes with this record here a progressive folk record from Adelaide Australia um, very weird to find this sort of music being put out in 1981 but that's the case with these guys it's a private press um, pressed to probably small numbers, I'm not sure. Napa Tandy is the name of the band. And the guys play sort of progressive folk. Uh, there's a female vocalist, I think her name, what's her name? Her name is uh, Marion Brown. And she, honestly, has the voice of, you know, it's right up there, it would sit up there with, uh, you know, uh, with Sandy Denny and um, Celia Humphreys from the trees and... Um, who else can I think of? You know, the, uh, Sheila McDonald. All of these really wonderful folk singers from the early 70s. Uh, this woman, sound, you know, has that same kind of quality. And the recording is beautiful as well. They've done a really fantastic job of capturing the, um, the spirit of the songs. Napa Tandy, um, named after the Irish Revolutionary Unionist. Um, I think it was James Napa Tandy. So there you have it. There's uh, a few records that I um, that I bought over the over the summer so far. Um, I'll give a shout out to all you guys that are still with me. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, I uh, hope to make some more videos pretty soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.